I've never been able to learn languages. And anyway, there wouldn't be much point learning Hungarian for coming here a couple of days every year. But I do want to greet you in a language which is not common to either uh, you or me, the kind of greeting you would receive if you came with me to Gombe National Park in Tanzania. <laughs> In chimpanzee, that is saying, this is me, this is Jane. <laughs>Last week I was in um, Austria and before that I was in Germany, before that I was in UK and before that I was in Spain, before that I was in Holland and before that I was in Congo. Her home is England, the house I grew up in and the garden is not huge but it's quite big. The trees I climbed as a child are there and so that's where I go in between these endless trips around the world. So 300 days a year I'm on the road and then in between, in two days here, four days there, occasionally three weeks, like in the summer and Christmas. One tree in the garden, still there, beach. I used to climb beach as a child, and beach is still there, much bigger now. I can't climb him anymore. There's no low branches left. They've all gone way up. Whenever I get to a, a new country, I sort of look around to see if there's somebody who might be interested in starting Initially roots and shoots because that's easy. You just need a group of children and Then maybe there's a champion uh, To start Jane Goodall Institute and that's what happened in Hungary and it Didn't happen immediately, but finally there's a group of wonderful volunteers and JGI Hungary is a registered NGO so here we are. James Tree. James Tree. James Tree. <laughs> I, you know, the one who started it was, was Katty, who's now in England with her family. And so meeting her family and then her friends, and that's how it gradually grew. Introduce Walter Inman, because Walter Inman started JGI in Austria. So we're hoping to have closer ties, not only with the Roots and Shoots groups in Hungary, but between Hungary and Austria, and maybe eventually around the borders, so that we will link all of Europe through the JGI's and Roots and Shoots, through cross-border collaboration, which will be very exciting. What I said was not that zoos better for a chimpanzee. In fact, most zoos are not. What I said was that in the wild, many chimpanzees are threatened with the destruction of their forests by hunters, by being caught in wire snares. And if I was a chimpanzee living in that sort of unprotected situation in the wild, then a really good zoo I would prefer. But the real protection wild is the best place but so much of the wild in Africa is now threatened and so many many of the wild chimpanzees are having very stressful lives. So I like to look at it, you know, I'm imagining I'm a chimpanzee. Would I be rather be in the wild even though there's danger around me? Or would I be rather in a zoo where there's a good social group? where I have lots of stimulation, where I have keepers who understand and care for me. So, we're here today to unveil a plaque to a Hungarian who's played an important role in my life and in the conservation of chimpanzees. And that's Dr. Geza Cherokee. 
And I would like his widow and his son to come and join me here. This Heather and Aiden is, is their son. And I, I don't remember when I first met Peter. It was so long ago. 1968, he joined me in Tanzania. And that led to him coming and doing his PhD in Gombe National Rock Foundation. But I also believe that he would find this uh, gathering rather amusing and ironic uh, because he had very strong feelings about Zulis. And, and in fact, throughout all the years that we were together, we have never been to one together. However, he would be very appreciative of everything that is done by all the zoo employees, the directors, the staff, and the visitors to open their hearts to primates and to realize that their lives, that they live here, are as important to them as our lives are to us. We are able to use the maps produced by Google Earth from, uh, from space. Actually, the, it's the digital globe which provides these images for Google Earth. And using these high-resolution maps, we've been able to help the villagers around Gombe to, um, to create their village land use plans, which they're required to do by the government it costs about $20,000. They have to get everybody involved. So normally the villagers, there's no way they can do it. So because, because the villagers trust us because of our take care program, which has improved their lives, they have put set land aside around Gombe to act as a buffer between the chimpanzees of Gombe and the villagers and the trees have now grown back because of the seeds still in the ground and 15 years after we began this program the chimpanzees have three times more forest than they have before and the bare hills around Gombe are once again becoming green and forested. Last week, the United States government, the Fish and Wildlife Service, announced the decision which we've all been working for for years to include captive chimpanzees as endangered, like the wild chimpanzees, and that gives them maximum protection. So it will mean that, that people cannot do medical research on them or uh, use them in circuses, entertainment, if it means that they are psychologically or physically harming the chimpanzees. They have to get a permit if they want to do anything like that. And mostly, the permit will be denied. The last book, Seeds of Hope, is about the wonderful kingdom of the plants. And I wrote it because the piece I wrote about plants for the book on endangered animals was too long and the publishers cut it out. So I was going to produce just a little book, but it was as though the plants put roots into my brain and said, Jane, you spent all your life working for animals, now it's our turn. And so I went, they took me really on this amazing journey through the kingdom of the plants. And for me, it was absolutely fascinating. And I hope it will be for the people who buy the book too.